Nigeria's far-reaching reform package, which includes further privatization plans and new incentives for investors, will be the key focus in a new report that is coming out in 2017. The report, Nigeria 2017, will shine a spotlight on the country's long-term strategy for boosting oil output, which will be steered by a major overhaul of the regulatory framework governing the sector. My name is Peace Hyde, and this is my worst day on Forbes Africa TV. Nigeria's plans for shifting the economy away from reliance of hydrocarbons for export revenues and driving growth across its industrial sector, especially at its free zones, have necessitated major legislative and regulatory changes. While external pressures and domestic challenges remain problematic, Nigeria's strong fundamentals and abundance of resources make it an attractive prospect for investors, and one legal mind has been instrumental in driving the narrative. Let's take a look at who he is. Benga Oyobode, MFR, Born the 30th of March 1959, is one of the founding partners and chairman management board of Aluko and Oyobode. A lawyer by profession, he specializes in advising major corporations on matters relating to oil and gas, power, foreign direct investment, privatization, telecommunications, project finance and aviation. Oyobode had his secondary school education at Christ School, after which he proceeded to study law at the University of Ife, where he graduated with a Bachelor of Law LLB degree in 1979, and he was admitted as a barrister and solicitor of the Supreme Court of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in 1980. He went on to obtain Master of Law LLM degree at the University of Pennsylvania in 1982. Oyobode co-founded Aluko and Oyobode with Bankole Olomide Oluko and is currently the chairman of CFAO Yamamoto Nigeria Limited and Okumu Oil Palm PLC. He also serves on the board of MTN Nigeria Communications Limited and Nestle Nigeria PLC. He is on the Africa Advisory Committee of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange as well as a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators. Oyobode is a member of the Nigerian Bar Association, the American Bar Association, and the International Bar Association. In 2001, Oyobode was conferred with the Nigerian National Honor, member of the Order of the Federal Republic of Nigeria by the Nigerian government, and he also holds the Belgian Royal Honor of Knight of the Order of the Leopold. Welcome to another episode of My Worst Day. And joining us today, we have one of the most distinguished legal minds in Nigeria, Mr. Benga Ayabode. Thank you for joining me on My Worst Day. Thank you. Now, let's begin with the definition. I mean, your reputation precedes you, but the man behind all the accolades, can you please tell us who is Mr. Benga Ayabode? Well, Benga Ayabode lives in Lagos. I was born, uh, exactly born in London, but came to Nigeria very early on uh, uh, in my life. Uh, essentially grew up uh, in Kanu and, and in Lagos. Uh, went to university at the University of Ife. Uh, and then proceeded to the US, uh, did my uh, postgraduate studies at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, uh, and came back to Nigeria soon thereafter. Uh, set up a law firm uh, and uh, practice law. That's what I do. That's my passion. Um, maybe the only other thing about me is that I come from uh, easily what I think is uh, one of the smallest Yoruba states, uh, Ekiti. Uh, <laughs> uh, and Ekiti people are known for two things. One's education. The other thing is eating pounded yam. Um, but really, that's me. Okay. I'm sure you're very, oh, obviously you're very educated. What about the pounded yam? <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, if you eat pounded yam uh, uh, from Ekitia, you won't, uh, that's, that's all you'll eat. Uh, we, we are great lovers of uh, our yams. Huh? So we eat boiled yam in the morning, we eat fried yam in the evening, we eat pounded yam for Ooh, lunch. <laughs> sounds like my kind of state. <laughs> Now, you're currently the managing partner of Aluko and Ayobode, 
But your legal career spans a number of years in the Nigerian sector. Now talk to us about your journey. Well, look, uh, very early on uh, when I uh, practiced law, I when I graduated, I decided that one of the things I wanted to do was to learn from the best and the brightest. Mm -hmm. So um, going off to the United States uh, was a great experience for me, very early 80s. I uh, decided that um, not only was I going to do postgraduate school, but essentially I was going to get admitted to practice in, in New York, for instance. Huh? So I um, uh, worked at White and Case in New York, uh, and essentially for me that was a great experience. It was trying to understand how you ran huge law firms, huh? essentially uh, name partners that uh, had since passed on, mm -hmm. uh, but had handed over these great law firms to uh, 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 partners to, to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and for me it was like, how can we replicate this in Nigeria? Uh, and so very quickly thereafter I came back to Nigeria and, and decided that I needed to um, uh, set up a law firm. Uh, and, and not just set up a law firm, but essentially set one up for which uh, uh, the, it, it was really about a partnership. Eh? A mm -hmm. partnership that was going to be an institution, one that there was going to be legacy, one in which the legacy was not necessarily that uh, my children would take over, mm -hmm. which is essentially what we'd had in Nigeria where there were family-owned law firms. Um, so today, what am I proud about? I'm proud about the fact that we do have a law firm that's uh, sustaining. We have a law firm where uh, I have sort of stepped back from the practice uh, today. I, I'm chairman of the law firm. Uh, I continue to do work, uh, but the firm today is uh, more than just uh, Bingo Your Body. It, it is a firm that is the biggest Nigerian law firm. We do cross-border work across the continent. Uh, we rank uh, uh, the, amongst the best uh, law firms on the continent. Uh, we have relationships with some of the largest uh, uh, law firms in the world. Uh, uh, and so that's that reputation that I always intended to, to develop and I'm happy that we have it today. Now, I've noticed a very interesting thing about you. You actually, you have a very strong corporate affiliation with some of the leading brands of our time. Mm. Now, from Nestle to Access and now CFAO, um, how did that side also develop and what role do you actually play in these numerous organizations? I think, look, it's important that as a corporate lawyer, what you tend to develop is relationships with clients. Mm -hmm. uh, the longer those relationships exist for, the more confident and comfortable uh, clients are with, uh, with the, the advisors. Uh, lawyers uh, uh, have a very unique role mm -hmm. uh, in, in, uh, in, in corporate life. Um, you know, you advise boards, you advise CEOs, you advise corporates about uh, changes in law, about sometimes really just about uh, policy changes in the country. Um, one of the things that I tend to think I bring to the table is a very sound understanding of what we call business judgment. Uh, so that my role is not necessarily giving purely legal advice. It's also about saying to people, this is what I think uh, uh, exists in this market. Um, if you had to make a call, a business judgment, you know, who would you rather have advising you? Uh, and, and what has, uh, has transpired over the years is that I think most corporates that, uh, uh, that I sit on their boards or that use our firm tend to look at me for more of a business judgment with mm -hmm. respect to operations in the country, uh, um, you know, what, what, what are the things that they need to, you know, operating in Nigeria is particularly difficult and, and therefore that's what I bring to the table across the board with, with the multinationals that operate here and, and with Nigerian corporates. As a lawyer, you definitely are no stranger to setbacks. Um, but your job is usually to help people to mm. get out of trouble. But when you reflect on your personal career, um, let me ask you, what has been your worst day in business? Well, so, uh, you know, my worst day in business essentially is something intensely personal. Uh, my, my partner, Bankoli Aluko, who was senior advocate of Nigeria, passed on very suddenly in February uh, 2002. Um, so it's not... If, if I had to think about it, is it a business failure? Mm -hmm. Is it a, essentially, it was intrinsically personal to me. Yeah. The fact that uh, a name partner, somebody who was not just my friend, but also my business partner, um, you know, you wake up one morning and, and, and uh, you hear that he's ill. 
rather, in actual fact, not an illness that was particularly serious, something that we expected him to, um, oh, no. to pick up and, 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 and move on from. Uh, but two days later, um, you know, he, he passed on. Uh, and um, it was at a very crucial part of our existence. Uh, mm. We'd uh, spent time building the firm, spent time building the reputation of the firm. He had recently become senior advocate of Nigeria, which is the Nigerian equivalent of the English QC, a very prestigious honor in our society. Uh, we expected that, that that in itself will drive significant growth in the firm. Mm -hmm. um, we expected that uh, finally, we, you know, for, on the litigation side of our practice, because we expected to build a, a full service law firm, the litigation side of our practice would essentially be where we wanted it to be. Um, you know, we did great corporate work and we did great litigation work, but you know, the firm was meant to be a full service law firm. And then all of a sudden, um, he's no longer uh, around. So it was a significant setback for the firm, a uh, significant setback personally for me because this was somebody that I had known pretty much all my, almost mm -hmm. all my life. Um, but then uh, the signals that I sent to all of the people that worked with us uh, for me was really to say to them, you know what? Bankole would have liked us to succeed. Mm. He would have liked us to continue building the firm. He would have liked to look back and say the legacy was the firm. Mm. Uh, the existence of the firm, the success of the firm, the growth of the firm. Uh, and very quickly, uh, I, I called everybody together and I said, you know what, guys, you know, we need to do this, not necessarily just for us, but mm. for him, um, so that we have a, a, a sustaining legacy, so that the, the name of the firm, people will yes, look back today and say, who's the Aluko in the Aluko and everybody, and we can then turn around and say, you know what, it passed on under really sorry circumstances, except though that the legacy uh, uh, persists. So leading up to um, this unfortunate event, how long had you been um, in a relationship? Oh, no, no, we, we'd, 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 we'd actually had the law firm at that point, uh, we'd actually had the law firm for about 10 years. Okay. Um, so it wasn't, uh, um, you know, this wasn't uh, a new, relationship and I'd known him uh, essentially for so maybe... So speak to me about your, the relationship before, prior to even getting into business then, were you... Oh no, well, you, you know, uh, I, I like to tell people that, you know, you may have 180 million Nigerians, but mm -hmm. in terms of uh, the sort of uh, communities and the networks that we all live in, uh, you know, it's actually much smaller than that. Yeah. So while Bankole went to the University of Lagos and I was in the University of Ife, where we had actually grown up in the same circles, uh, mm -hmm. had known each other, uh, uh, and had kept uh, in touch with each other mm -hmm. before we became partners, but more importantly, had developed as true professionals in the different things that we did. And so when he essentially joined the firm uh, and became a name partner of the firm, uh, the reality for me was that, you know, it was a culmination of all these um, things that we had done together yeah. uh, and socially, uh, professionally. Uh, it was a recognition of the fact that we had identified that, you know, this uh, two, two name partners of a law firm who essentially had a, a vision. And what was that vision? Building a great law firm. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and so for me, the shame was um, him not being around to see that firm, okay, that great law firm that we wanted to uh, build together. Uh, uh, happen, uh, but the reality of it today is that that firm, uh, uh, that brand, the name of the firm, mm. is one that uh, is now well known across the continent. It's extremely um, uh, and, and I think that for me is the legacy, and, and that in itself is it gives me tremendous satisfaction. When you reflect back to the working relationship that you had with Aluko, what was that like? Oh, it was great. Um, uh, you know, uh, as I said, you know, trying to build a a, a full service law firm required us bringing uh, um, people who did corporate work, who did litigation. Um, so I had strong corporate skills, he had strong litigation skills. Mm -hmm. um, except that, you know, in doing these things, these are really different <laughs> disciplines, if I put it that way. Um, but the very fact that we understood that that was the intention mm -hmm. uh, uh, meant that we were then able to bring on board. Uh, uh, people that we thought were, would be able to assist us. Huh? Mm -hmm. and, and to give you an example, over the last 20 years, most of our partners today in, in the firm are people who joined us in those early years. Uh, and so, again, gives me tremendous satisfaction that most of our partners in the firm today also worked with him at that time. And so are able to share in the vision, mm -hmm. are able to share in uh, the experience. Yeah. Uh, and so we can look back and, and, and look back and, and say to ourselves that, look, you know what? Uh, what we planned, uh, we achieved, 
uh, but we achieved it so that people could recognize that you know a great lawyer uh, called Bankola Luko uh, uh, passed through, um, mm -hmm. but more importantly, that that brand continues today to, to sustain. Mm -hmm. um, leading up to the time of his um, passing, what were some of the projects? I know you keep on emphasizing there was a lot of things that you were now putting in mm -hmm. place. Could you share with us some of the, the systems or the um, initiatives that you are now employing? I, I think, look, the, the, the reality is um, very few Nigerian law firms uh, uh, at that time were built on, um, on a true partnership. Mm -hmm. um, so historically, uh, most Nigerian law firms were family-run businesses. So what was the message? The message was that we'd send our kids to school, uh, they would come back as lawyers, they would take over, and, and uh, typically, most of the law firms, uh, um, the, the children took over. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there was a sense in the marketplace that lawyers are fungible. My view of life is that lawyers are not fungible. The fact that your father is a great lawyer doesn't, <laughs> doesn't necessarily mean that you would be a great lawyer or that you would continue to build a great law firm. So for us, uh, I think that the project uh, uh, and, and, and the satisfaction of that project was essentially building the firm, yeah. but recognizing that it wasn't about us, yeah. Uh, it was about a team, mm -hmm. uh, and that that team needed to be the very best that we could find, mm -hmm. uh, and that that team needed to share uh, from the, the profits of the firm, uh, recognizing also, for instance, that a time would come where some of us would step back from the day-to-day -day management of the firm, which is essentially what has happened today. Uh, and I think for me, that was the key project. You know, there are lots of uh, transactions uh, that we worked on, but I think the key, the key signal that we sent to the market was our ability to achieve, our ability to do the things that come easily, uh, maybe not easily in the sense of they happen by, by uh, you know, without effort, but they happen because we worked at it, they happen mm -hmm. because we wanted it to happen, uh, and that we gave it our all. Um, now, let's look at the events leading up to this. So from one phone call where he says to me, oh, you know, I can't make it into the office today, you know, um, I picked up something rather innocuous, uh, to our next phone call, which is, hey, you know, he's actually not doing very well, he's at home, and I say, fine, I jump into the car, and I rush across to his house, uh, only to find that, you know, something that we thought was totally innocuous. Uh, had taken him away. Uh, in a very short uh, couple of days, uh, it was great personal loss, yeah. uh, great professional loss. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, I'd like to also think that, you know, it was not just a, a loss for me, uh, it was a greater loss to his family, to his yeah. children. Um, but my reflection was really the fact that um, we had this law firm that we had jointly uh, built. Um, we needed to keep it together. Yeah. We needed to make sure that it, uh, uh, um, you know, it, it was sustaining. Uh, needed to make sure that uh, the people that worked with us understood that this was it was a huge loss, but we but uh, it was one uh, that we were going to live through. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was also one that we would look back at uh, and say to ourselves that you know if we hadn't done the things we did then. Um, that in itself was uh, a, a circumstance that could have destroyed all of us. Was there ever a point that you felt that, um, when you found out about the loss, was there ever a point that you felt like this is the end of the firm, this is the end of everything we've built? Um, it did cross my mind. Mm -hmm. It did cross my mind. What were you thinking exactly? Oh, well, look, it's a, uh, um, you know, uh, to give you an example, I have no litigation skills whatsoever. I, I practiced law, did, uh, uh, you know, went to court a couple of times, but felt that it wasn't for me. The question was, was this a, a role I could uh, pick up? I, I say to people today, some of the lawyers I respect the most are people who can do litigation and do corporate work. Mm. Well, that just wasn't uh, for me. Uh, and so what I needed to uh, do at that time was to make sure that uh, the lawyers that worked with Bankole uh, at that time felt that they were part of the firm, mm. uh, not just that they were part of the firm, that they could uh, um, uh, deploy their skills, even though he wasn't here. And I'm happy to look back uh, after all 15 years and mm -hmm. say, you know, today our firm not only is one of the biggest firms uh, in the country, but we are, uh, within the firm today we have two uh, senior advocates of Nigeria who were essentially people who worked with Bankole at that time. So mm -hmm. that in itself is self-satisfaction of the fact that you know we did have a vision uh, because we did pick the, the right people uh, to succeed us, but more mm -hmm. importantly that we, uh, the firm itself lived through uh, what I consider to be an extremely difficult period. What do you think he would say if he saw 
what you've managed to build since his, his uh, passing? I, th I think uh, with a wry smile, um, and he wasn't a man of very many words, I think he would, be, he would look at what we've built, he would look at the legacy we've built, he would look at the fact that people today uh, remember um, the fact that you know, uh, uh, he was a name partner, but that not just a name partner of 15 years ago, but a name partner of a firm today that, is, that has a legacy, mm. uh, uh, has uh, achieved um, much bigger than we were uh, uh, when he left. Uh, I think that in itself um, would be satisfaction yeah. uh, of the fact that not only did he pick the right partners, but that uh, he worked with the right people uh, and, and that, um, you know, that legacy is sustaining. How did this experience shape your outlook in life? Well, look, let me put it to you this way. Death has always been one of the things, it's a certainty. Uh, it's always been one of the things that I, uh, uh, I've always said to myself that, um, you know, we, we, it, it's something that you have to deal with. Uh, I lost my father very, very early on. Uh, I was 12 years old when my father died. Uh, over the years, I, you know, uh, I lost a son. Um, I lost my partner at some point. So for me, um, I've always felt that um, if you ask me what are the real changes in, in my life, I, I, I would actually say to you that um, you know, if you've experienced the death of people extremely close to you, mm -hmm. that it, you know, it does change you. Um, you know, the things that uh, uh, you, you have a, a realization uh, that um, your time here is a bit more than just the frivolous. Uh, and more importantly, uh, it pushes you. Um, to consistently perform. It pushes you day to day to deliver um, because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So for me, um, you know, the fact that this happened uh, essentially was um, a game changer, mm -hmm. but it was one that I was willing to not just contemplate, but willing to, uh, to deal with, uh, uh, pick up the pieces and move on. You're seen as a role model for a lot of young people in the continent, not just mm -hmm. Nigeria. Um, if they're watching today, which we hope they are, um, what advice would you give them to follow in your footsteps? Look, the, the advice for me, uh, and, and I am pretty consistent about this, I spend a lot of time mentoring. I spend a lot of time sharing with people. Uh, I don't turn, turn down an opportunity to speak to you, uh, uh, the younger generation. So what's the advice? The advice is, look, we all trip and we fall uh, consistently. Uh, but uh, the realization that um, you can pick yourself up uh, and that you can achieve. Uh, and and um, I believe very, very strongly in the ability to make your own luck. Um, you know, so uh, uh, I, I'm a firm believer in the fact that, you know, uh, um, people are fortunate in life. Huh? But I also think that inherent in uh, people being fortunate is the fact that you work hard to achieve. Uh, and so I don't take uh, life lightly. Uh, I take every opportunity that is given to me as one that uh, I'm blessed with. Uh, and I think that if you, if you work 110% consistently every day, um, you know, what's yours will come to you. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the first thing. But secondly and more importantly, uh, uh, if you work extremely hard and if you have the targets uh, uh, that are uh, therefore, not necessarily for material advantage, mm -hmm. but for the satisfaction of knowing that the efforts that you've put in are, are the best that you can, you can give it. Uh, I think that what you achieve, you'll be happy with, uh, you'll be satisfied with, uh, and, and also you are, uh, there's a community feel. Uh, uh, we live in a country where uh, community and family is critical. When you look back on your relationship with Aluko, um, if there was anything you could say, if there was any final words you mm. could have given him, if you could, you know, mm. expect what happened, mm. expect the unexpected, shall I say, what would be your last words or your final message that you would have wanted to give him? Uh, well, my final message, uh, and you know, this isn't something that I've thought of, but my final message would have been that would make him proud. Uh, and I think that the, the, what I see, the legacy today, is that we have made him proud. Mm -hmm. um, so today, uh, um, you know, when somebody walks into our office and they ask, uh, so where is Mr. Luko? And we tell, him, they tell them the story. The reality is that they wonder, but you could have changed the name of the firm. Mm -hmm. um, you could have evolved into something else. Um, but for me, it was a promise. Uh, it was uh, the legacy. Uh, it was important that we kept to that promise. It was important that we developed, uh, um, you know, the vision that we, had, we jointly shared. Uh, and so I, I think that, that would be what I would want to say to him, is that we would, we would make you proud. Uh, and, and I think we have.
Thank you very much for sharing all of us some amazing pearls of wisdom and your worst day. Thank you. Now you've heard from the gentleman himself, and now let's find out what some of his closest allies had to say about this remarkable legal mind. The Access Bank story, particularly the period 2002 until he just uh, retired recently in 2015, uh, cannot be written without being Gary Ibode, being very, very prominent. A couple of things he had to do. Uh, first of all, his initial role was basically as a stabilizing force. The key thing for me has always been his calmness under pressure. His ability to look beyond the immediate problem and say, you know, how do we move on from here? How do we overcome that problem? He had a much, um, a much more difficult task, which was, you know, how do you basically lift up this bank um, at that time with 2 billion naira capital to meet the minimum threshold of 25 billion naira. Um, what I admire most about Gwenga is that he's very kind, he's warm, he's a people's person, you know. Um, I don't know anybody that doesn't like Gwenga. Some people dream of success, while other people get up every morning and make it happen. Success is the result of consistency, hard work, learning from failure, loyalty and persistence. Now the question is, do you have what it takes to handle success when your worst day comes? My name is Peace Hyde and this is my worst day for Forbes Africa TV.